one of the things I spend my time with are actually uh, crossing different breeds. Um, you know, this is ordinarily something that's, you know, pretty frowned upon by normal pigeon fanciers, but uh, there is a method of my madness of doing this sort of thing. Um, we can come to learn a lot of things about the genetics of the varying breeds, uh, genetics in general. Uh, you know, there's, uh, despite the vast volume of pigeon genetic research that has been done, there's still a lot that we don't know. So, uh, this pair here is a Kazan tumbler from Russia. This is actually an American style Kazan, uh, real Kazans, uh, which are a type of courtyard tumbler in Russia called Stantney. They really no longer exist in Russia. So kind of the, the birds we have here in the U.S. that we call Kazan tumblers are actually kind of a <clears throat> homogenization of varying uh, breeds like Rostovs and Volgas and things of that nature that have pretty much all been crossed together, uh, brought out of not only Russia but also uh, Western Europe and Northern Europe. So we have a, uh, he's a red velvet Kazan, which means he's a tea pattern, and he is actually uh, split for dilute and he also has Miroy which is uh, Lebanon bronzing he has a slight ribbon tail um, we know that he carries recessive red because he has a gray tail bar um, in his tail so that is uh, one of the ways you can tell whether uh, uh, Ash Red who is carrying Miroy has uh, recessive red behind him as whether he has a uh, clear band in the tail or a gray band in the tail and he has a gray band so the, the hen is an old-fashioned frill, um, and neither one of these are very good examples of showbirds or anything. The chasm's not bad for what he is. This is an old-fashioned frill. Um, she's got a mixed tail. Uh, she doesn't have good lacing. She's actually uh, really doesn't seem to express any uh, actual frill stencil. I think she's actually uh, toy stencil too which is one of the components of toy stencil. There's three different genes involved in that. So this is uh, one of the matings I've been working on that's a crossbred mating, you know, kind of just to see what's going on. And I've got some similar matings going around here. So we'll look at their offspring to see what we got. One of the things you'll notice about the, the parents here um, in addition to him being a self-marked bird, he's got the Lebanon bronze. Um, he's got extra tail feathers. He has a different carriage, dragging wings, grouse, uh, grouse legs. While the frill hen, she's pretty much a normal pigeon apart from her peak crest, her neck frill, uh, very basic grouse legs. And, uh, you know, one of the things we want to look at is, uh, you know, what kind of offspring do you get when you cross two breeds like this. And this isn't the only crossbreeding project I've got going on around here. I do all these in individual coops, you know, kind of to control it and see what's really going on. So we'll take a look at uh, their youngsters. This is their first round of offspring here this year in 2016. So we'll take a look at them and see, kind of see what we got. So this is one of the offspring of the uh, Kaz and an old fashioned frill cross. Um, just a dark splashed bird. Um, he got obviously the, the grouse legs of both parents. Um, to some degree, there's actually more plumage on the legs than either parent. Um, he's going to have longer uh, muffs, if you want to call them. They're uh, very basic muffs on here. They're more of a grouse. Um, but he's dark. He's got a white rump. He's got a white moon on his chest. And I've, I've seen this bib and these frill crosses, crossbred to uh, chasms, come out this way a lot. A um, little bit of white on the head. So, as you can see, like his father, he is uh, plain headed. And he's a pretty aggressive little bird, actually. I think it's a cock. Um, I haven't counted his tail feathers yet. Usually they only have 12 or 13 out of these chasm crosses, even though the chasm has uh, 14 to 16 ordinarily. Um, I don't know if you can see it because we don't have good light, but uh, he's got pretty heavy toy bronze 
for being heterozygous. You know, you can see the uh, the bronze in his flights, especially through there. So that is one of them. And I'll show you the other one that uh, I'm pretty pleased with as far as the, the color and the markings and that sort of thing. And they've both got uh, pretty short little beaks. You know, they've got the same beak as the pretty much as the frail, a little bit downturned. So, this is the clutch mate. Um, as you can see, she is actually marked pretty much like her frilled mother. Um, she got pretty good uh, markings. Um, she's got the shield marking with the colored tail. Um, she's actually got slightly longer feathered legs than her, her uh, brother does. And uh, you can't really tell in the light, I don't think in the camera, but uh, she is a uh, dilute toy bronze. Actually a really beautiful uh, color. You know, I would classify it as a sulfur. And, uh, you know, she's basically a dun with uh, heavy toy bronzing. And uh, we know this is a hen because both the parents are intense. And the only way you're going to get a, a dilute out of that mating is if your cock carries dilute and it's always going to be a hen. So.